Antoinette Caidito was a girl who, at nine years old, had already taken on the responsibilities of someone much older than her current age. One April night, when a visitor came to the door, Antoinette went to answer it. The identity of whoever was at the door was unclear, but it is believed the visitor took Antoinette that night. 31 years later, she still remains missing. Antoinette Christine Cayadita was born on Christmas Day, 1976, to Penny Cayadita in Gallup, New Mexico. She was raised with two younger sisters at a house not far from Route 66. It was there that Antoinette spent a lot of time taking care of her siblings. Quote, the story I always heard was that Antoinette was like our mommy, Wendy Montoya, the younger sister, remembers. She made sure all our clothes were ironed for the week, made sure we were fed and the house was clean. When our mom went out, we usually had adult supervision, but a majority of times it was my sister helping the babysitter take care of us. On the evening of April 6, 1986, Antoinette's mother, Penny, had been out with friends at a local bar, and Antoinette, along with her younger sisters, Wendy and Sadie, were with a babysitter. Penny arrived home around midnight and sent the babysitter home. According to Wendy, there had been a knock on the door at around 3 a.m. Her and Antoinette were still awake, and Antoinette, being the responsible older sister, answered the door. When she asked who was there, the knocker told her it was Uncle Joe. When she opened the door, she was grabbed by two men. She kicked and screamed as the men threw her into a brown van. Wendy didn't get a look at their faces, but did not seem to recognize either men. The next morning, when Penny went to Antoinette's room to wake her for Bible school, she, an she realized Antoinette was not in her bedroom. After running to the neighbors, desperately hoping they would have some information, she called the police. About a year later, Gallup police received a disturbing phone call. Police department. Hello. Oh, I'm Antoinette Cabrito. Okay, whereabouts in Albuquerque? Who said you could use a phone? Hello? <laughs> Antoinette, where are you? Antoinette? It remains unclear if the call was simply a cruel prank or if the call was really Antoinette. Four years later in 1991, another odd lead emerged. A waitress in Carson City, Nevada, told authorities she thought she had seen a then-teenaged Antoinette, sitting with an unkempt couple and looking to be in distress. The waitress claimed the girl continually knocked her utensils to the floor, seemingly attempting to get the waitress's attention. The girl would then grab the waitress's hand when she handed back the utensils. After the group left, the waitress found a note under the girl's plate that read, Help me. Call the police. Whether the story is true and if the girl seen was Antoinette remains a mystery. Over the years, many efforts have been made to find Antoinette. Her mother, Penny Cayadita, turned to her Navajo culture and consulted medicine men and women about her missing daughter. In December 1992, her disappearance was featured on the TV show Unsolved Mysteries. Police have some theories about the case. While Antoinette did have an Uncle Joe at the time, police interviewed him and deemed he was not a suspect. Today, authorities believe Antoinette is deceased, but they have never located her body. They also believe that the family, Penny in particular, may have more information than what was given to the police. Detective Amos Hershaw revealed that a number of people were seen going in and out of the apartment on the night of her disappearance. On April 18, 1999, Penny passed away from a combination of liver cirrhosis and cardiac issues. Detectives went to interview her on her deathbed, but she died before they could speak to her. It is very interesting that law enforcement decided to pay her a visit before she passed. Were they hoping for a last-minute confession? There have been rumors that, while not confirmed, have plagued the case. In particular, rumors that Penny was involved with drugs and bought a sports car the week of Antoinette's disappearance, which would be notable since she and the girls lived in a low-income area. 
An interesting detail that is not often brought up in news articles is that the house they lived in had a screen door directly in front of their normal front door. This strongly suggests that Antoinette knew, or at least recognized, her abductor. Because if she had opened the front door and didn't recognize the visitor, why would she then unlatch the screen door for them? The timing of the abduction is also interesting. How would a stranger know that Antoinette would be awake at 3 a.m.? Let alone take the risk that Penny would open the door that late at night instead of Antoinette. Most predators would not take the risk of being discovered and would most likely try to gain access to the house unnoticed. How much sense does it make for a child predator to go to their victim's house and knock on the door at 3 a.m.? The mystery of what happened that night continues on. Today, Antoinette would be 43 years old. For more information on her case, please visit charlieproject.org. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos.